Welcome everyone, my name is Sylph, and this is my attempt to beat a hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Shining Pearl with only Steel-type Pokemon. The full rule set for this run is listed down below, but put simply, only the first Steel-type encounter in each route or area can be caught. If a Pokemon faints, it must be permanently boxed. No items except held items in battle. Party Pokemon levels are limited to the next gym leader or the final league member's ace. And finally, the battle mode must be put on set at all times. That's right, for the first time in our channel's history, we're going to be using the Steel-type in a hardcore Nuzlocke, which thankfully the Diamond and Pearl remakes make entirely possible with a host of really cool potential encounters. I'm not going to lie, this is quite the awesome selection of Pokemon, and there are some very interesting encounter methods for a lot of them too. The Steel type has consistently been one of the most requested types from you guys, so I'm excited for this one, especially in such a crazy game with EV trained NPC teams and whatnot. I mean, we saw in our last video just what they're capable of. Now, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl brought back a much wanted feature with character customization and new outfits, but I don't want you guys to be limited to some nice fits virtually. That's why today's video is sponsored by our good friends at Kamira, a clothing brand that consistently blows me away, and here's why. They've found the ideal balance between quality, reasonable pricing, and fair labor, vetting their entire supply chain for ethical and sustainable manufacturing. Their premium t-shirts go for just $20, and they're way better quality than what you'd find from major brands. They're made from 100% ring-spun cotton and are made to be comfortable and durable. And they've also got long-sleeve shirts, polos, as well as sweatshirts and hoodies too. All my fellow gamers out there are in luck too, as Kamira carries graphic tees with designs inspired by video games and with unique, one-of-a-kind artwork. A few of my personal favorites include the Moonlit Wolf, Glowing Dragon, Space Dimension, and Flying Whales. Not only does Kamira have great products and prices, but also service too. Orders $60 or more get free shipping in the US, and there's also a satisfaction guarantee with a full return policy. But we're going even further beyond, as Kamira's also partnered with me to bring you guys an exclusive discount code. Use code SILF on any orders before December 31st, and you'll get 10% off. Click the link in the description below to check out their site and for some more designs that they have, and make sure to let me know which ones you're fond of. Thanks to the team at Kamira for sponsoring today's video, and let's get into the run. We begin our journey in our humble abode, and... Alright, I took like eight steps already. I think it's time for a nap. Going downstairs, our mom greets us and... Oh, right, I almost forgot. I named our rival Larry. Something seemed out of place, and then I was like, Oh, yeah. He took an L already. We pair up with Mr. Larry on Route 201, and look at us. Just two filthy degenerates looking for legendary Pokemon when we don't even have a Pokemon of our own. Running into Professor Rowan and Dawn, he's telling her how he basically left the Kanto region because Sinnoh is more exciting for research. Yeah, fair enough, man. I mean, this is when they released a metric sh ton of legendaries, after all, so Kanto doesn't even come close. We pick our starter, a Piplup, which will eventually get the Steel-type, and before heading off on our journey, we say goodbye to our mom and... Wait a minute. You know, I thought these were initially cookies, but the more I look at them, they look like the heads of mushrooms. That explains the mystical creatures running around. I end up naming our Piplup Monger, and Monger has a relaxed nature, plus defense and minus speed, which is kind of meh. Rowan requests that we help him fulfill the Pokedex, and you know what? I'm gonna say n Up ahead of Sand Gem Town, Dawn tells us we need to go say goodbye to our family, and... Well, what family? I don't even have a dad. Hey, hey, hey! Touch me again and I'll rip your f***ing head off. Anyway, this route is full of Bidoof and Starly, both in the wild and on the trainers, which is actually pretty good in terms of EVs, since we want our future Empoleon to be a relatively bulky, but also reasonably quick special attacker. Toward the end of the route, I forgot to heal ahead of the last battle, and we had a ridiculously close call with a Shinx. It turns out it was also a speed tie, but thankfully we won it on the last turn. Man oh man, almost lost the run already. After messing around in Jubilife City for a while... We can grab the Quick Claw and head north for some special attack EV training against Badu on Route 204. The training was much needed too, as let's not forget about the kids in the trainer school with Abras that have Charge Beam. And the first one got a special attack boost, but we had leveled up just enough to clutch it with 5 HP left. The second trainer's Abra actually outsped us though, but we got a miraculous crit to save us. Sheesh. Now here, I actually decide to use the Workup TM on Piplup this time, which will hopefully help us for our first rival battle against Barry, which, keep in mind, this time we don't have anything else to help us. 
Because I know his Starly tends to spam Growl, I load up with Work Up, which increases both our attack and special attack, that way we know the latter is still increasing regardless, meaning Water Gun is eventually a two-hit KO. Now we all know his Turtwig tends to spam Withdraw to raise its defense, and it does resist Water Gun, but because of our lowered attack, his heightened defense, and our increased special attack, Water Gun is by far the better option and takes him down in four hits. Moving onward, Manga reaches level 11 where he learns Charm, which lowers opponent's attack by two stages. With that, we arrive in Orberg City where the first gym is, and given that it's a rock-type gym, Manga is able to demolish the trainers with ease. After some grinding to the level cap of 14, it's time for the first gym leader, Rourk. Now keep in mind, last time we had a Psyduck to work with, but this time, it's just Piplop. You might think this would be easy, but think again. Kranidos is a terrifying monster, and I've tried this in the originals before to no avail. But I have a bit of a plan here. He leads with Geodude, and, well, what choice do we have? Get out there, monger! Water Gun is a 4 times super effective KO on it, and in comes Onyx. Now here's where my strategy comes in. I know that Onyx's attack is the lowest on his team, so I go for Charm here twice in a row as Rock Throws bring us to three quarters. Now that his attack is lowered, I start loading up on Work Ups, and after two, I hit it with Water Gun to its sturdy ability, and then he uses a potion so another does the job. In comes the massive threat, Kranidos, with us just above half health. This thing definitely outspeeds us, hits us with Headbutt, we survive on just 8 HP, and thankfully don't flinch, so our super boosted Water Gun KOs him in one attack. Oh man, one flinch or one crit and that would have ended us, but we pulled through. You see what I mean though, in the originals you can't get charm or work up on Piplup, but we definitely made it work with that strategy. For winning, we're also given the Stealth Rock TM, which should be of good use. While leaving Jubilife, Dawn claims that 90% of all Pokemon are somehow tied to evolution, and you know, I really want to actually count that out just to spite her. Somebody please do the research on that one. Our next destination is Floroma Town, where we have an incredibly interesting situation. If you have a save file of Pokemon Sword or Shield on your Switch, this man here gives you none other than the mythical Pokemon Jirachi, which is a Steel type. Now we generally have rules against Legendaries and Mythicals, but we never really get a chance to use Mythicals in-game like this, and Jirachi's base stat total of 600 is the same as Garchomp. I'm not going to use this thing for now, but it will be on our party as an almighty good luck charm, and I do have an idea for it later in our journey. I nickname it Everhard, and it has a bold plus defense and minus attack nature, which isn't terrible. While battling a galactic grunt, Monger hits level 16 and evolves into a Prinplop, getting us ever closer to that steel typing. North of Floroma, we save the Honey Man, who gives us, you guessed it, honey for saving him, which is, weirdly enough, the key to our next encounter, although you wouldn't really think it. I slather all the available honey trees, and time for a long six-hour wait. Thankfully, on our first batch, we actually got what we needed, a Burmy, and it ended up being female, which makes it viable. Now, some of you are probably like, self, what the hell, that's a bug type. But just you wait. I nickname it Pepper, and she has a quiet nature, plus special attack and minus speed, which is actually pretty good. Up ahead at the Valley Windworks, we have to battle Commander Mars, and she leads with a Zubat as I send out Monger. Water Gun hits it below half, and then it uses U-Turn to pivot into Perugly. From here, it flinches us with Priority Fake Out, and then hits us with Scratch to about half, but I can now use Charm to lower its attack, and wait for my Orinberry to activate, so now we have a little more health that's actually technically worth more too. After two more water guns, I realize we're still being outdone, so I take the risk to use Work Up, and in the end, this saves us as we take it out with just 11 HP remaining. Her Zubat is then an outspeed and KO with a hypercharged water gun. After the battle, this girl's like, Thank you, trainer. I think the balloon Pokemon will come visiting again. You mean... Oh. Uh, oh no. Our next destination is Eterna Forest, which, as we learned in our last challenge, is pretty terrifying compared to how it used to be. Thankfully, this time we have Pepper with us, and she absorbs the Abra's energy balls amazingly well, but also has same type attack bonus or a stab super effective bug bite to respond with to take them down. Eventually, we arrive in Eterna City, where the second gym is located. This gym is a grass type gym, and with only a Prinplup, we'd be hopeless, but Burmy gives us a fighting chance. Now, something that's really interesting is that Burmy has three forms it can switch between depending on where it last battled. However, it evolves into one of these forms permanently at level 20, and because we're using it indoors, we can make it evolve into the form we want, the Trash Form. Alright, don't make fun of it for its namesake. This thing is amazing, being part Bug and part Steel-type, and let's be honest, is one of the most forgotten Pokémon of all time. However, it does learn Quiver Dance upon level up too. 
After getting to the cap, it's time for the gym leader, Gardenia. Now if you think about it, Warmadam Trash Form is an absolute Gardenia destroyer on the face of it. Bug and Steel type, meaning it quad resists grass, is immune to Roserade's poison typing and has super effective stab against pure grass types. What I'm essentially able to do is load up on Quiver Dances against Trichero B, which raises our special attack, special defense, and speed, while the most it can do is Dazzling Gleam and raise its special attack with growth. Now we don't have a special bug move, only bug bite, but it's still a one hit KO on Cherubi, and now we outspeed and take down her Turtwig to the red, and because of her potion, she eventually gets Reflect Up, which is not good. In comes Roserade with us right about half, but Petal Blizzard is four times resisted, so we stall out the Reflect, and Bug Bite also steals her Citrus Berry, so we eventually take it down with just two HP remaining in the end. Much closer than I thought, but Pepper got the job done just in time. With that, we get access to the Underground from the Underground Dude, and after about half an hour of searching, I finally find what we're after, the Armor Fossil, which is exclusively available to Shining Pearl, which is the reason we're playing it. Another 15 minutes of searching brings us another encounter down here, Magnemite, which tend to only spawn in ice and water biomes as a special encounter. I catch it and nickname it Jarvis, and Jarvis has a modest nature plus special attack and minus attack. Absolutely perfect and quite a rare thing for us to get a good nature. Not only that, but I noticed it was also carrying a metal coat which raises the power of steel moves. Unbelievable. On our way back to Orberg, we can also use Cut to access this hidden area, which holds a very valuable item for us, the Silver Powder, to increase the power of bug moves, so I put that on Pepper right away. It's time to hit up the Orberg Museum, where this guy can actually revive our fossil for us. He says, You go outside, yes, please, now! Time alone is what I need, now! Jesus, dude, no need to yell! I literally proceed to step outside and step back inside, and he says, You were gone too long! You kept us waiting! Unacceptable! You just can't win with this guy, can you? But he gets the job done as we receive a shield on. I nickname him Patriot, and he has an adamant nature, again perfect for us with plus attack and minus special attack. Wow, just wow. Our next stop is the Galactic HQ, and it was here that I realized how amazing Magnemite will be for Team Galactic. Not only is he immune to poison, but Electric works really well against the Zubat line too. In no time, we reach Jupiter, who's a bit of a different story with her Scun Tank, but I thought of something that might work. She leaves with Zubat, and I send out Jarvis, who's able to outspeed and one-hit KO it with Electro Ball. Damn. In comes her Scun Tank next, which has Flamethrower. I realize I have to risk it, and I keep Jarvis in, but our sturdy ability saves us from the KO, and thankfully we don't get burned, although I had a Rostberry on just in case. From here, I land a Thunder Wave now, and immediately switch into Monger. Now that Skuntank is crippled, we're able to start chipping it down, but here's the problem. Skuntank has Snarl, which lowers our special attack. I have to switch to Pluck now, and in the end, we're able to take it down, but Aftermath hits us too, and we survive on just 9 HP while poisoned. Whew. That paralysis was definitely necessary, and Sturdy saved us, as Wormadam is four times weak to fire after all. After getting a slick new green bike, we have access to Cycling Road, and our next point of interest is actually below the bridge in Wayward Cave. Here, after a while of searching, we can get our next encounter, a Bronzor. I catch one successfully and nickname it Whiplash, and Whiplash has a brave nature, plus attack and minus speed, which definitely works. In Mount Coronet, we run into Cyrus and... Hey, man, let's party! Ugh, oh, f*** off. Not this sh again. We quickly arrive in Hardhome City, and because Fantina is scared to battle us right now, we just pick up the Shell Bell and also encounter this kid who's complaining that his sisters get all the attention and no one notices him. I see you, little guy. I may not like you, but you are seen. Heading into Amity Square, I'm like, yay, our Pokemon can follow us now! But apparently Jirachi isn't classified as being cute. This is like a widely known, top-tier cute Pokemon. Okay, sure, open its third eye and it's terrifying and kills you, but I mean, come on. If you're playing your own run, it's also helpful to know that you can get the Volt Switch TM here, so it's worth grabbing. In the end, I decide to rebel and have Jirachi walk with us and... Hey, why are you looking at me like that? I... Oh! Why are you running? Upon entry into the contest hall, this random girl's like, oh, my hero. And then our very own mom is like, oh, hello, Sylph. <laughs> Barry interrupts our exit at the city with a battle challenge, and although I accidentally led with Monger, our pivoting game is surprisingly strong at this point as Jarvis handles Starly with ease. 
a switch back into Monger takes care of his Ponyta, a switch into Pepper handles Grottle quite handily, and finally his Buzzle is taken out by Jarvis as well. I have no doubt that Barry will become a lot tougher, but for now we're smooth sailing. After picking up strength from the lovely old ladies at the Lost Tower, we can head to the Salacion Ruins, which have two key items for us in the bottom room. The Mind Plate and the Odd Incense, which both boost the power of Psychic moves by 10%, and given that we have Everheart and Whiplash, I'm glad that we get two. Normally I'm like, what the hell is the point of this? Alright, this is gonna seem random, but I was just beginning a battle with this girl, and what the hell is that face? Ugh, like seriously, why? Just, just why? On Route 215, we can pick up the Fist Plate, which I have a very funny feeling is going to be useful later on. Upon arrival in Veilstone City, we can pick up the Metronome item, thanks, random person with a giraffe rig, and we can also grab some nasty plot TMs from this legend. In the department store, I make sure to pick up the usual Reflect and Light Screen TMs, but also some amazing TMs like Thunderbolt for Jarvis and Psychic for Everheart and Whiplash. Now, we have a bit of a dilemma here, as both of the next two gyms have a level cap of 30, meaning whichever one we do first will have to roll in a bit underleveled. Ultimately, I decide that the Pastoria gym will be a bit more manageable for us, so I head there first. It's a water gym, and obviously Jarvis is incredible for it, being able to slam through most of the trainers. At one point, there was a trainer with a Gyarados though, and because Patriot was so low leveled compared to the rest of our team and has Sturdy, I was like, eh, I'll just switch him in for a second and get him out for extra XP, but he uses Whirlpool, which traps us in. Oh no. Amazingly though, he uses Substitute and Scary Face in the process, meaning we got to switch at the last moment on just 10 HP. Yikes, that was close. During the process, Jarvis hits level 30 and evolves into Magneton, which should be a great help for Wake himself. Before the gym battle, I also teach Monger Grass Knot for a particular reason, and it looks like we're set to go. Jarvis, are we ready, buddy? <laughs> it's time for gym leader Wake, and jeez, I just noticed how large of a man he is. He begins the battle with a Gyarados, so Jarvis is a perfect lead as he's unaffected by Intimidate and can one-hit KO him with Thunderbolt after he just landed a crunch. He next sends in Quagsire, and this is the exact reason I taught Grass Knot to Monger, as it's an instant 4 times super effective 1 hit KO. Floatzel is his final Pokemon, and a switch back into Jarvis gets him hit below half with Bite, but thankfully our Citrus Berry brings us back up above half, as Brine doubles in power if the opponent is below half health, so that was actually surprisingly close as we take him out with Thunderbolt with 18 HP left. 3 Badges I take the time to explore the Route 212 area, which nets us a Bug Buzz TM, just what we've been waiting for for Pepper, and we can also grab the Soothe Bell from the Pokemon Mansion, which I have a feeling will be useful for later. We're running out of room for this level cap, so it's time to take on the Veilstone City Gym. It's a fighting type gym, so Whiplash does an amazing job being fairly defensive, even though he's unevolved, and being able to put some good damage down with Mind Plate Boosted Psychic too. The fourth gym leader is Maylene, and right before the battle, I was all confident, but then realized something about her team. Her Metatite also has Flash. I was thinking just going in and Quiver Dancing with Pepper and then using Psychic would be good, but I think we're gonna have to get a bit more creative. Low accuracy would be dangerous, and we'd need a lot of Quiver Dances to outspeed her Lucario. She leads with Metatite, and I send out Jarvis. It looks really dangerous with her having Drain Punch, I know, but I use Thunder Wave to paralyze it before it uses Light Screen. I then switch into Monger as Metatite uses Bulk Up. Here, I use Charm to lower her attack, and she gets another Bulk Up off, and then another Charm before she hits us with Drain Punch, but with lowered attack, it's not doing much. Here, I switch into Whiplash, and I set up Reflect as she remains paralyzed. With Reflect up, her paralyzed, and her attack lowered a bit, I can now switch into Pepper and start Quiver Dancing. She did hit us with Flash though, and got up Light Screen again, but I used Protect to stall it out too. We miss our first Psychic though and get hit by Drain Punch to two thirds, and then our next Bug Buzz hits and takes her out. In comes Machoke, which is an instant one hit KO with Psychic. Her final Pokemon is her beastly, Eevee trained Adamant Lucario with a big root item, and it turns out we still don't outspeed as she hits us hard down to 9 HP with Drain Punch before our berry, and then Psychic doesn't even do half. Uh oh, this is not good. I immediately switch into Whiplash, who gets hit to below half, but our berry brings us up above so we can take another on 15 HP and get that Reflect up. Whew. With that up, I can now switch back into Monger and get two charms off to lower its attack with just 11 HP left, then I switch into Jarvis to hit her with Thunderbolts even though she healed up a couple times, and we lived one final Drain Punch on 4 HP before being able to KO. Man oh man, that was terrifying. Our entire team was destroyed to low health from that, but we made it through Deathless. While leaving the gym, Dawn is panicking about Team Galactic attacking her, and I'm like, oh my god, we've gotta save her. But Shield Dawn is just like, 
I operate at my own pace. Do not disturb me, mortal. Up ahead, we find this woman's missing sweet key and she invites us in for some reason. Immediately after, this grunt absolutely smashes into shield on with the power of a thousand suns. Whoa. Hey, I'm walking here. I'm really excited to be- Listen to me, listen to me. We don't talk like that, we don't say things like that, you understand? We then mace the Psyduck in our way, thanks Cynthia, and on the way to Celestic Town, Patriot ends up evolving into a beastly Bastiodon. Man, oh man, look at how slow he walks. This is hilarious. <laughs> okay, wait, what? How is this? That's not even how physics works. Patriot, you absolute deity. Whiplash doesn't want to be left behind, so he also evolves into a Bronzong, which should be quite helpful with the Levitate ability. Jarvis also learns the Flash Cannon move, finally giving us a reliable Steel-type move since we haven't really had one yet. After picking up some Surf TMs from Cynthia's grandma and teaching one to Monger, we can actually do something really cool. There's an early part of Mount Coronet available really early in game, which means we can take Jarvis there and Magneton actually evolves if leveled up here. So now we have a beautiful Magnezone on the team. Amazing. A bit more grinding later and it's time for the hard home gym. Whiplash handles the Ghastly line really well and Patriot handles the Drifloon line, so I'm happy we got those evolutions. Just before the gym leader, Monger evolves right at the level cap into Empoleon, rounding out our team evolutions for the time being, although it did accidentally overlevel to 37, so we won't be able to use it until we get the badge. It's time for the fifth gym leader, Fantina, a ghost type trainer. She leads with Drifblim, and I lead with Jarvis. Her Drifblim is really designed to take on physical attackers with Will-O-Wisp, Strength Sap, and Aftermath, but Jarvis tanks Hex quite easily and instantly KOs her with Thunderbolt. Next up is our Gengar, which outspeeds and confuses us right off the bat, and we hit ourselves. We get brought below half with Dazzling Gleam, but then our Thunderbolt ravages Gengar in one hit. Magnezone's got some power. Her final Pokemon is Miss Magius, and it really has no coverage against us at all, although Phantom Force brings us low, Thunderbolt brings her below half, but also gets the Paralysis. Even though we'd outspeed now, we're still confused, so I switch into Patriot, who tanks Phantom Force, and Rock Tomb lowers her speed, so combined with Paralysis, we quickly outspeed her and take her out in a few attacks after she Hyper Potion twice. On the way to Canalave, we had a really funny situation where this guy whirlwinded Whiplash out and brought in Magnezone against a star raptor. Congratulations, you played yourself. Above Jubilife City, we can pick up the sea incense to help Monger's water moves, and then we arrive in Candelave City. Here, we have another battle against Larry, and his team has gotten quite strong at this point. His Staravia is easy pickings with Thunderbolt, but then he sends in Heracross. Now this thing would absolutely ravage our team, but thankfully Whiplash is neutral to fighting and tanks Brick Break well. He does have Thief though, which is super effective, brings us below half, and takes our Mind Plate, but Whiplash still has enough power with Psychic to KO. Buizel is then handled by a switch back into Jarvis, Ponyta by a Surf from Monger, and Grottle is again hard countered by Pepper. Gradually becoming tougher though, that's for sure. With that, we can head to a place that is essentially just an item bonanza for us, Iron Island, which was basically designed to help out Steel Teams, as you might imagine. Throughout the place, we find the Iron Tail TM, the Iron Ball item, the Magnet to boost Electric-type moves even, and the Iron Play to power up Steel moves. At the end of helping Riley out, he gives us an egg, which actually counts as our next encounter, except he kind of like disappeared. If you've been around on Twitter, you know this game is riddled with glitches, but this is one that I hadn't seen yet. Where did he go? The Canalave Gym is a Steel-type gym, but a lot of the trainers have part Ground-type Pokemon, so Monger clears a lot of it by himself. But there's a problem. Halfway through, and all of our Pokemon have reached the level cap. Now, when we did our water run, we had like 10 encounters, but I knew this would eventually happen since up to this point we've only had 5 or 6. But this is why we kept Everheart as a good luck charm, as it can single-handedly save the run by wiping through the rest of the gym trainers, even smashing steel types with resisted psychic. Amazing stuff, and so fun to use something like a Jirachi during the main playthrough. This leads us to Gym Leader Byron, who I'm feeling relatively okay about, although he uses the same type as us. He starts with a Bronzor, and I lead with Monger. Sea Incense Boosted Surf does about three quarters, and then he uses Trick Room. Now he outspeeds, and I thought he'd go for Confuse Ray, but instead he used Sandstorm, so another Surf takes him down. In comes his Steelix next, and with Trick Room it actually outspeeds us, and I thought Monger was bulky enough to live it, and we do, just barely, on 12 HP so we can take him to Sturdy. 
Man, that Earthquake was not only stab and super effective, but also boosted by Soft Sand, a plus attack nature, and 100 attack EVs, so I may have underestimated it. Here I switch into Whiplash with Levitate and he uses a full restore. I set up Reflect after we get hit by Thunderfang and Trick Room ends. I sent in Pepper since she's not weak to ground, but we got paralyzed right off the bat by Thunderfang, so that didn't work out too well, and I switch back into Whiplash, who's the only one who seems to be able to handle this Steelix. So, it's a 4 minute long grind, but eventually with the help of Reflect, we're able to take him down with Psychic, being brought to about half in the process. His final Pokemon is Bastiodon, and since he can't hurt us a whole lot, I stay in and go for a couple of Psychics, followed by a Reflect, before we're brought to 22 HP. From there, I switch in Jarvis for the predicted Thunderbolt, and then Flash Cannon takes him down in 3 hits from there since he has no ground coverage. Much crazier than I expected, but we got through it. With our 6th badge in hand, and some Flash Cannon TMs for winning, I'm beginning to get those crazy ideas again about a Deathless run. Let's see what happens. Before anything though, we need to get out of this terrible outfit. I want to die in this thing. So I activate my mystery gift to receive the platinum outfit, which we can change into at the Veilstone clothing store. Ah, much better. At Lake Verity, we face Commander Mars, and I've got to say, Whiplash is having his time, as he completely walls everything she has. Quite an amazing Team Galactic counter, I'll say that much. In Mount Coronet, we can pick up two great items, the Light Clay to extend the duration of Reflected Light Screen, as well as the Soft Sand to power up ground moves. After making it through the treacherous snow routes of Route 216 and 217, we arrive in the beautiful Snowpoint City. The Snowpoint Gym is an Ice-type gym, and interestingly enough, there's actually a bit of a glitch you can do here where you just take this path and keep bumping into the ramp at a certain angle, and it takes you straight to Candice without... Excuse me, sir, what did you say the gym leader's name was? I, I, oh, wait, hi, it's, it's Can Candice... <laughs> Never again. This meme format is over. But yeah, without facing any of the trainers or doing the puzzle or anything. But since our rules don't allow any glitches or exploits technically, I went and did this stupid puzzle nonetheless. Still useful though, especially if you're feeling overleveled. Now I was thinking about Candace's battle for a long time, and eventually realized something. Her Snover has zero coverage against Pepper, so... That's right, it's time for some Quiver Dancing. I get three off before obliterating it with super effective Bug Buzz. Her Sneasel comes out next though, and according to my calcs, it should still outspeed us, and I know this thing is likely to use Dig Against Us in terms of its coverage, so I go for another, and she does, so the Hail hits us below half to activate our Citrus Berry, then I can use Protect while the Sneasel's underground to then take it down with Bug Buzz. Unreal. From there, both her Metacham and Obama Snow are one-hit KOs with the same move. Now that's what I like to see. Seventh badge acquired. Knowing what lies ahead, I spend some time working on our egg, and eventually it hatches to give us none other than a Riolu, which I nicknamed Fury. Fury has a gentle nature, plus special defense and minus defense, which is meh. For that extra fighting coverage, I'm going to replace Everheart for now. I give Fury the Soothe Bell to raise his friendship faster since that's how it evolves, and also get it a massage in Veilstone for the same effect. After taking on the Galactic HQ, we take on Cyrus and... Why does his overworld model look like this, while his in-battle model looks like this? The discrepancy between the two is just madness. Anyway, Jarvis has super effective coverage against his entire team, so that's the Pixies freed. On our way to the summit of Mount Coronet, we pick up the Rock Slide TM, and Fury ends up evolving into a Lucario much earlier than I had expected, but I'm definitely not complaining. At the summit, Cyrus summons the almighty legendary Pokemon, Palkia, who seems to be very unhappy, might I add. The commanders then challenge us and Barry to a double battle, and since we've got Monger, we can just attach the Metronome and use Surf to destroy everything on the field, including Barry's Pokemon, with an increasingly powerful attack each turn. Their Bronzor also didn't use Light Screen this time, so that made it even easier than last time. It's time for the final battle against the Galactic Boss, Cyrus. He leads with a Honchkrow, and I send out Monger. I decide to just use Charm on him while he uses Defog, and then switch into Jarvis. We actually outspeed and then smash him with Thunderbolt for the KO, and in comes Gyarados. Now this is why I switched in Jarvis the way that I did. Gyarados will outspeed us and has 4 times super effective Earthquake, but we have Sturdy so we survived on 1 HP and slam him with a 4 times super effective Stab Thunderbolt, but his Wakan Berry activates and just barely lets him survive in the red. I'm forced to switch now, so I go into Whiplash to avoid the Earthquake, and Whiplash is able to KO him in a few Psychics after he heals and hits us hard with Crunch. In comes Weavile next, and it just uses Fling, and Gyro Ball just barely doesn't KO. He hits us once more to 32 HP, and another takes him down. 
His final Pokemon is Crobat, so I switch in Patriot, who eats up everything he throws at us as Rock Tomb KOs in a couple of hits. A little messy, but I think we managed that well. Palkia is all that's left up here, and... Oh, what's that? I think he's saying he wants to be trapped in a tiny ball for the rest of eternity. Here you go, little fella! <laughs> Wanting to match the stylishness of our outfit, I upgrade our Pokeball stickers, and I must say they're looking quite fancy now. We arrive in Sunny Shore City, one of my favorites, and of course Flint has to come and scare us before we head to the lighthouse. Volkner says, I'm gonna unleash everything in my arse! Oh, arsenal on you. Okay, I, I might have misread that a little bit. The Sunny Shore Gym is upon us, and Magnezone is able to tank through it pretty well with the help of his typing and tri-attack, and Whiplash helped a lot too. Unfortunately, our team does become overleveled though, so it's time for Everheart to save the day once again, proving to be a massive problem for the trainers. Oh, what's that? Oh, okay, I'll tell him. Uh, guys, for Everheart's contributions to the run, he says all he wants in return is for you guys to follow me on Twitter, so the link is down below. A pretty fair request, I'd say. It's time for the 8th and final gym leader, Volkner the Electric Trainer. He leaves with a Raichu, and I send out Jarvis. Surf is the best he's got against us, but he ends up Volt Switching on the second turn into Ambipom, who tanks the second Tri-Attack. He then hits us with Fake Out, followed by a double hit, which brings us to 29 HP before another takes him out. Raichu comes out again, so I'm forced to switch, so I send in Whiplash, who tanks Surf, followed by Volt Switch to about half, and then we hit Octillery with Psychic for a bit less than half, but we get the special defense drop, and he just uses Focus Energy, so another KOs him. Raichu comes in and Volt Switches again, and Luxray tanks Psychic with over half. Here I switch into Patriot, who tanks Crunch and then Iron Tail before hitting him with Rock Tomb, but his Citrus Berry activates. He misses his next Iron Tail though, we hit him again, then his Thunder Fang paralyzes us, but we make it through to KO him. His final Pokemon is his stupid Raichu, so I send in Monger to tank the Surf, survive Volt Switch on 37 HP, and then smash him with Surf for the win. All 8 badges, let's go! A long trek through Victory Road brings us to the Pokemon League, and, well, apparently there's a 1% chance to find Steelix in here, which we couldn't get at Iron Island since Riolu was technically our encounter there, but, yeah, we've already got a full team. Don't get me wrong, I love Steelix as much as the next guy, but maybe on another run. Right before the League, we have a final battle with Barry, who has become ridiculously powerful with EV-trained Pokemon with competitive sets and items, so this should be crazy. He leads with a Staraptor, and I send out Whiplash this time, since he now has close combat of all things. He uses Sunny Day as I go for Psychic to bring him low. He then uses U-Turn though, and sends out Torterra as I get the 8-turn Reflect up with the Light Clay item now. He uses Stealth Rock, and Psychic does very little, and he has leftovers. Yikes. I have no choice though, so I hit him again, but then he uses Roar. He brings out Pepper though, which is the best thing possible for us, as super effective Bug Buzz takes him down. Rapidash comes out next, thankfully after the sun went down, so I switch into Monger who tanks two flame wheels before Surf wrecks him. He sends out Staraptor next, and I switch Whiplash back in, predicting close combat, but he used Sunny Day instead. I go for Psychic, but he U-turns into Snorlax, which has Crunch. I use Reflect again, and he uses Yawn on Whiplash. Eventually, I switch into Fury, who tanks resisted Crunch, but our defense gets dropped, but amazingly, Aurasphere does the job from about half. Staraptor comes in, and I switch in Pepper, but the damn thing goes for Sunny Day again, but then hits us with close combat, but Pepper actually eats it up entirely and destroys it with a flash cannon. Up next is Floatzel, which has no coverage against us, and one Bug Buzz does it in. His final Pokemon is Heracross, which thankfully doesn't have a fighting move, but he gets the flinch on Rock Slide and a Reflect goes down. Thankfully, without a fighting move, he can't do much on Patriot, so Rock Tomb finishes him off. A bit of a complicated battle and could have gone south, but we made it to the League. While grinding up, fulfilling the rest of our EVs, and upgrading our movesets and items, I gave our Pokemon a bunch of bitter herbs to fix that stupid affection mechanic that these games have that give your Pokemon extra crits and allow them to survive when they shouldn't and whatnot. With that said, it's time for the EV train fully competitive Elite Four. The first Elite Four member is Aaron, the Bug Trainer, and he gave us a hell of a time with his Drapion last time, and we could use Empoleon with Drill Pack, but we don't have an Intimidate Gyarados to switch into Heracross this time, so... After thinking about it for a long while, I realized our best option was Pepper, as his lead, a Dustox, has no coverage against us, so we can set up a ton of Quiver Dances while stalling out Light Screen, and then sweep his entire team with Psychic and Flash Cannon. God, that feels good, as his Heracross and Drapion could have destroyed us. The second Elite Four member is Bertha, the Ground-type trainer. 
Given that we're a steel type team, her team is terrifying for us, but I at least know what we're doing for our lead. She leads Quagsire, and I lead Monger, who of course has 4 times super effective Grass Knot, which is a 1 hit KO. She sends out Golem next, which is EV trained in speed and attack with Sturdy, so I switch into Whiplash, who's immune to Earthquake, hit it with a Psychic since the most it can do to us is Stone Edge, and it does over half. I then use Reflect with Light Clay, and then take it down with another attack. Pseudo Wudo comes out next, and I figure she'll try and Sucker Punch, so I switch into Fury, but she actually went for Low Kick, which thankfully only did about half on the switch since Fury is pretty light, then Aura Sphere pulverizes it. Whiskash comes out next, which does have Bulldoze, so I try to pull off the strategy I was hoping for. I switch into Whiplash, but she went for Hydro Pump instead. Damn, I was not expecting that. I switch into Monger here, knowing we've locked it into Hydro Pump, and she actually misses, and Grass Knot does only half since it has a Rindo Berry to lower the power of Grass moves. We get hit by Bulldoze and have our speed lowered, and then another takes her down after we got hit by Hydro Pump. Her final Pokemon is Hippowdon, and I know it will outspeed after our speed was dropped by Bulldoze, so I switch into Whiplash for immunity and to bait the Crunch so I can switch into Monger again, now with our speed restored, and take it out with one Surf. Amazing. The third Elite Four member is Flint, the Fire Trainer, and his team is looking pretty tough, especially with Infernape, which has two types super effective against us, but I came up with a strat that might work. He leads with Rapid Ash, as I lead with Monger, and I thought he'd use Hypnosis so I had a Chesto Berry on us, but he went for Flame Charge before we took him out with Surf. Interesting. We need as little damage as possible for my plan, so I'm not liking that. In comes Lopunny next, which is fully EV trained in HP, and I'm not liking this thing either. I switch in Whiplash, who gets hit by High Jump Kick, and then Fire Punch, then I get Reflect Up. Now that we can survive, I switch in Fury, but he gets a crit on Fire Punch. Oh no, this could be the end, but I have no choice. But then he misses High Jump Kick, so we can one hit KO him with Aura Sphere. Unreal. I thought it was over, but our luck balanced out to the point where we should be. Steelix is then a one hit with Aura Sphere as well since it's Sheer Force, not Sturdy, and then Drift Blim comes in. Now this thing has no attacking moves, so I switch in Patriot who I taught Taunt, so after a Minimize and Burn, I use it. Now here's the key, I know his Infernape has a Focus Sash, which could end us because it guarantees a close combat on us somewhere. But here, with Drift Blim immobile, I use Stealth Rock. Now I switch in Whiplash to get the Reflect up once more, and then I switch in Jarvis, but with the Taunt gone now, he uses Baton Pass, which passes the Minimize to Infernape. Oh no. Stealth Rock then hurts him, and it all comes down to if we land this after he hits a close combat, and we do to smash him into the ground with Thunderbolt. Oh man. From there, Drift Blim is easy pickings. We did it. Somehow we found a way to take on the biggest threat to our team. Let's go. Up next is Lucian, the Psychic type trainer, and it's time for Pepper to shine once again. He leads with a Mr. Mime, which does have Light Screen and Reflect, but Pepper resists both Dazzling Gleam and Psychic, and both of his types are super effective against both of Mr. Mimes, so we can set up a million Quiver Dances. Okay, not quite that many. And sweep through his entire team with Stab super effective, Silver Powder boosted Bug Buzz, and we even outsped Alakazam, which I was kind of surprised about. Would you like some salt to go along with that Pepper? It's time for the final battle, the champion, the bane of our existence, Cynthia. I theorycrafted for what felt like an hour for this battle, and let's just say I was super nervous, especially after last time. This time, I tried to think about her battle differently. Not in terms of what I need to immediately do, but how I need our team to end up looking in the endgame to handle the big threats like Garchomp and Milotic. Let's see if it's of any use. I use the rest of our rare candies and go for it. She leads with Spiritomb, and this time I have nothing super effective against it, so I lead with Patriot, who I think will outspeed it. Because of this, I use Iron Head, and as if fate wished to return our luck, we do indeed flinch it, as I was hoping for, twice in a row. Her Citrus Berry activates, and then she hard switches all of a sudden into Milotic. Oh god. I send out Monger, Scald does little to us, and then I hit it with Grass Knot for some good damage as she can barely hurt us. She then hard switches again though, this time into Lucario, who Grass Knot does little on. I know I can't switch in anything to two hits in a row though, so I stay in, and she just goes for Nasty Plot, but Surf barely doesn't KO. She then hard switches into Gastrodon to absorb the Surf with Storm Drain. Oh man. But from there, Grass Knot does massive damage before it just goes for Rock Tomb. Weird. It does lower our speed, but I'm thinking we might just outspeed it still, and we do, taking it down with another attack. 
She sends Lucario back out, and after much deliberation, I know I can't switch anything in, so... I have to sack Monger for the first death of the run. Definitely the latest first death that we've had, though. From here, I send in our own Lucario, who I know she outspeeds, but we have priority extreme speed, which does enough to take him down. In comes Spiritomb next, and I go for Nasty Plot, knowing it can't do too much on us, and we need the power so she doesn't heal. Shadow Ball brings us below half, and then Flash Cannon does enough to take it down. Roserade then comes out, and I switch into Pepper, who tanks Shadow Ball well to half, and then I use Quiver Dance twice, since our special defense also raises, but Psychic just barely doesn't KO, and then she uses a full restore. We hit it again down to the red, but then we survive the next Shadow Ball to take it out. Amazing. She sends in Milotic next and uses a full restore, and then Bug Buzz does only a third. Man, that thing is bulky. I have no choice though, so I let Pepper go to a Scald in the end. With her Milotic now low, I switch in Jarvis, who I knew I needed to reserve for this thing, and Thunderbolt just barely doesn't KO, but her own burn takes her down from the Flame Orb Marvel Scale combo. Oh man, now here's the key. I knew I needed to save our sturdy Pokemon at full health for Garchomp, which would sweep through our entire team otherwise. So Magnezone survives a 4 times super effective Stab Earthquake on 1 HP and hits a Tri-Attack, but no status, and then we get taken down. But this is it. I knew Whiplash was the key to all of this. He has Reflect, is immune to Earthquake, and her only other move is Dragon Claw, which we resist. After setting up, I'm able to slam it with a few Psychics, and we live on 62 HP before destroying her with one last attack. All with a sturdy, full health Bastiodon waiting in the back. Man oh man, it was all about that forethought, knowing what we needed for the end game and just managing the beginning effectively. What a fun run that was, our first steel run, and our team ended up being pretty damn cool if you ask me. If you had fun with the run, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button as it really does help a lot and grows our community. A huge thanks to my YouTube members and patrons who make these videos possible. If you'd like to support and get your name up here, the links are also down below. If you enjoyed, drop a like down below to help the video out and leave a comment letting me know what kind of run we should do next and I'll see you guys for our next challenge video.